Several times in his ministry, Jesus proclaimed himself the light of the world. Surely that light is needed most right now as we struggle to understand how to live our lives in this new phase of life, in this time of separation. Yet the good news is we are gathered together in the Holy Spirit, and so we are still connected through God. We are still one with one another. Today's scripture seemed to me appropriate for our time, for as Jesus speaks of being the light of the world, for many there is darkness, an uncertain path ahead. Lent is described as a time of preparation to move closer in our relationship to God. Yet Lent is also equated with the wilderness journeys of the people of Israel when they wandered for 40 years as their trust in God grew, as they came to know themselves as God's people. So we wander in our own Lenten wilderness right now, but as we wander, we move through the light of Christ. <clears throat> Samuel was at a time of doubt in his life. <clears throat> Excuse me. He did not know where God was leading him. Samuel had fought the people of Israel for years, telling them they needed no king, for God was their king. And yet when God finally conceded and allowed people to choose the king, they chose Saul, a tall, handsome, strong man who looked to them to be a perfect ruler. And yet in short order, Saul was disobedient to God. He engaged in idolatry, he consulted witches, he did what was not pleasing to God, and God rejected him. So Samuel was given the task then of anointing a new king. And Samuel did not understand what God had planned for the future. He did not know where he should turn next. But trusted in God, went to Bethlehem to meet with Jesse and his sons, there to be told that he should stop looking to these tall, handsome, strong brothers of David as the next king, for they might proved to be just as Saul had been, inappropriate. Instead, Samuel was to look for the one whose heart was turned to God, the one who was obedient to God. And as Samuel went through all of the seven older sons of Jesse and was told none of them were the person that God had chosen to be the next king, Samuel asked Jesse to call his youngest son David. <clears throat> someone to be viewed as inappropriate. David was just a shepherd boy, only a child. And yet God often moves in mysterious ways, choosing those we might deem inappropriate. Yet God has a way of choosing those who are the right people for the job. Samuel doubted, and yet God moved through him to lead the people of Israel into their no new future. In the same way, as Samuel learned to see, the man who was blind learned to see. But in a physical sense, as Jesus took the dust of the earth, the very same dust that God had used to create humanity, and Jesus formed this dust into mud, placing it on the man's eyes, telling him that he should go wash in the pool of Siloam. And there, as Jesus spoke to the man, he said, we must do the works of God who sent me as long as it is day, for night is coming when no one can work. Jesus understood his purpose was to bring light into the darkness. And the man, after washing his eyes, saw that this was true indeed. His darkness had turned to light because of Jesus. As he rejoiced and shared the good news with his neighbors, they could not believe what they saw. They said repeatedly, we do not know who you are, even though he told them, I'm your neighbor, I'm the man who was born blind, and yet now I see. Filled with questions, they dragged the man to the Pharisees where their religious leaders might take a look at him and decide whether or not he truly had been healed from his blindness, if he was the same man. The Pharisees did not doubt he had been healed, but they doubted Jesus, who had done the healing. Some of the Pharisees said clearly, Jesus cannot be from God, for he healed on the Sabbath. But other Pharisees said, come on, this man has performed a miracle. He has given sight to one who is blind. He cannot be a sinner if God is using him in this way. And then the Pharisees, still doubting, quarreling among one another, divided their opinions about whether Jesus was a sinner or someone more invited the parents of the man 
to come and offer their testimony. They professed that he indeed was their son. They knew this much, but they did not know how he was cured. They were afraid to profess that Jesus had healed him, for in doing so they might find themselves isolated from their community of faith, from those who had rejected Jesus as God's chosen. But the man would not be silenced. He persisted in his truth. He could see now clearly, both physically and spiritually. He said to those who continued to press him on the subject that he did not understand how they could not understand who Jesus was, how they could not know that he was a great prophet and perhaps much more. The man said, it's astonishing. You say you don't know where Jesus came from and you don't know who Jesus is, and yet he has given me sight. He has opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. God listens to those who worship and who obey God. Clearly, Jesus is from God. And for professing his belief in Jesus, the man was indeed rejected by the Pharisees from his community of faith. He was blind, but he could see more clearly than the others. A few weeks ago on 60 Minutes, there was a story about Matthew Whitaker, a jazz artist who has been blind since birth. Matt possesses phenomenal skills. He uh, plays the keyboard, they notice, as if he was an acrobat on a high wire. He has such talent that other people have taken to studying him to see how it is that he who has been up, unable to see has yet been able to assimilate music almost as if the music is being read in his mind. Matt was born prematurely, weighing just one pound, 11 ounces. The doctors gave him less than 50% chance of living. But his parents, Moses and May, had faith. <clears throat> one of the outcomes of Matthew's early birth was that he was born without sight. After 11 surgeries to try and correct this problem, Moses and May decided enough was enough. They could not subject Matthew to any more experimental surgeries. So at the age of two, his surgeries were finished, and yet they noticed whenever Matt was near music, he would pull himself over to hear it more clearly. He would sit at the base of the speaker as if he was absorbing the music through his very body. His grandfather soon bought him a little keyboard, and Matt sat down and began to play with it, picking out the notes. And before long, he was playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, but not just picking out the melody with his right hand, he was also adding chords with his left. It was such an astonishing thing that his family didn't know what to think about it, other than that Matt had clearly been given a gift from God. So they set about finding someone who would teach him, someone who would instruct him, and yet it was as if Matt needed little instruction. The music was just part of who he was. At the age of 11, he began to play around the world with professional jazz groups, uh, astonishing audiences with all that he could do with the keyboard, with his instantaneous improvisation, his complex harmonies, his twisting melodies. Matt was just a phenomenon. A few years later, Dr. Robert Lim, a musician, but more predominantly a surgeon and a neuro neurophysicist, caught the attention, of, 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 Matt caught Dr. Lim's attention, and Dr. Lim asked Matt if he would be willing to sit down for an MRI. Matt was agreeable, and so first they played for Matt simply the voice of a lecturer speaking and talking. Matt's brain showed no unusual activity, but as soon as they played music for Matt, his whole brain lit up, even the part of his brain that gives sight. It's as if his brain had rewired itself so that Matt could now indeed see music in his own mind, even as he played it with his hands. He had a new way of seeing, a new vision. And so Matt's gift has then been a blessing to many people. Matt's brain so unique, so phenomenal, that scientists are continuing to study it to see if Matt's musical gift may in fact render other gifts to people in this world. That we may discover how to rewire our brains, how to see in new ways, how to hear God speaking to us.
In this rewiring of our brains, we remember Samuel, the one who struggled so much to see that God was doing something new. And yet, as Samuel had trusted God all of his life, he trusted God again. He anointed David as the new king, even while the old king Saul was still living. He trusted that God was doing new things, that Samuel could forget former things, did not need to dwell on the past, but could move into the future in trust and in faith as God, in God who holds all things in God's care. And as the neighbors of the man who was blind heard his story, they too began to believe. They could see in a new way, not merely with their eyes, but with their hearts. They could see that through Jesus, was God was doing wonders and new things in the world. God indeed was bringing light to shine in the world. For Jesus said, we must work the works of God who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Through his resurrection, Jesus still is the light of the world, still in the world. These are times of great wonder, times where so much is unknown. I know some things, but I do not know everything I wish I knew. I imagine that's true for all of us. As Socrates noted, I know that I know nothing. I don't understand fully what is happening in our world other than the epidemic of COVID-19 is spreading rapidly across all of the countries of the world. I do not know what the future holds. There is so much I do not understand. And that causes anxiety for me and perhaps for you as well. Fear of the unknown is a fairly dominant experience for all of us in our lives. And anxiety is not a happy place in which to live. But there's also something else I know, something that you know as well, something that lives in our hearts as we meet Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We may not know exactly what the future holds, but we do know that God holds the future. We know that God has invited us to live as children of light, leaving behind the darkness, choosing what is good and right and true, following Jesus Christ, the one who leads us to God, the one who lights the way, the one who teaches us to look with eyes of faith, to see in a new way, for God gives us new visions. And God gives us Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the one who gives light and life. Thanks be to God.